Well, 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 where to start? So since Easter, I admittedly have not been checking in on you and I wanted to catch up. So here's a vlog thing. Everything overall has been pretty good over here in our neck of the woods. And I hope your 2021 has been uh, good to you and your family as well. Today, I wanna to talk to you about what I've been doing, my outlook and plans for this year, and just talk about something we all struggle with, which is losing touch with the things that make us happy. You know, I've just been trying to live a more positive life lately, I'm trying to stay motivated, to keep in touch with all of my passions. And it's so easy to lose your focus on what makes you happy because it's difficult. And it's not easy to have several things that you're into and actually maintain like a healthy lifestyle while you're not neglecting another part of your life in order to obtain something else. So it's kind of the theme of today's vlog, it's balance. You have to find balance to stay positive, motivated, passionate, and ultimately feel alive in your own reality. With everything else going on in the world, it's more important than ever to enjoy what you have now, make the best of every minute, and not take anything for granted. Life is like a juggling act, you know? It's, you can't give more focus to one responsibility without having to struggle to keep the others up in the air. And if you're gonna ignore a passion for too long, you just kinda, you drop it out of the juggle. Maybe you pick it up when you find more time and you can get it back into the mix, but sometimes you can never manage to get it back you know, into your life because while you're juggling the bills, the kids, the house, your spouse, and the time to ensure that all of those things are cared for, then you sprinkle in the hobbies. And I know that me personally, I suck at finding a healthy balance of my interests. And I tend to get overly obsessively passionate about one aspect of my life, probably because I know that if I don't do it and keep moving towards it, that, you know, especially when I'm feeling inspired to do it, then that interest might just go away. And we all know that's what happens. Like no one has time for things until they make the time for this. And it's hard, but that's all you can do. You try and stay passionate about the things that matter to you and actively attempt to include them in your daily life. If you don't, you're just a coulda, shoulda, -er, and no one wants to be a person who never gets around to do those things. And I don't want that to happen to me, and I don't want it to happen to anyone, so stay hungry and go after what you want because it's, it's no one else's responsibility to give you your happiness. You know, you have to go out and earn that one all on your own. So, luckily, when you start doing that, it has a way of uplifting those around you. When you're in a better frame of mind, when things go well, you're more receptive to that. And when things don't go so well, you really can deal with that easier because you let the good parts of life outweigh the bad. So maybe there's something to that. I don't know. I feel a lot better when I'm not walking around bummed out about something because someone else convinced me I'm supposed to be upset by it. Like, that's fucking stupid and we need to stop doing that. Rethink why you're, you're not where you want to be in your own pursuit of happiness and actively evaluate how to obtain it. You know, these cell phones, you know, the second you let doubt creep in, you're done. You know, what do you think these are, are, are for? You think they're designed to make you happy? You think of it this way, as a satisfied customer, you know, someone who keeps spending their money? No, they don't. So these manipulate people into being empty shells of human beings, you know? They feel, we, we feel like we have no meaning, no direction, no vision of what we want to do. Then we're generally just willing to spend our last dime trying to fill a void inside of us, a void that these things are specifically designed to create inside of us. We feel empty, therefore we consume, you know, products to look prettier, look cooler, you know, learn the lingo to pretend happy for social media. That's like literally an entire industry, man. Pretend happy. I mean, technology was used to degrade our sensibilities almost immediately. We say we're more connected than ever, and yet we've never felt farther apart. I think if people got back to what matters, you know, what makes us who we are, which is each other, a lot of our problems would go away. I, you know, I think that we need the phones, but we don't need the manipulation that's built into them. That's for sure. So, anyways, when you find a, a balance in your life, you start living 
for others' happiness. And that's what it's all about, community, banding together, and, you know, to make sure everyone can go out there and find their happiness, go after their passions, and live their dreams. And that's what makes America great, in my opinion. So moving on from the broad generalization, you know, motivational stuff, um, life lessons that I'm like in no way qualified to give. <laughs> but whatever, you're, if you're still here, it's kind of your fault. So, look, I promise that I'm going to move on, but I just wanted to connect with some of you on a deeper level and try to convey where I've been coming from lately and how I've been trying to get to where I want to be. So, you know, what are my passions? As I've shared here on my channel, I'm into music, I'm into gaming, but there's one that a lot of people probably don't know that I'm into, and something I've been neglecting for the past few years, but to get to that, first we have to talk about the big thing lately, which has been spring clean. You know, getting ready to make the summer of 2021 the best it can be, and that includes cleaning up your shit. My garage has been a nightmare. This happens every year as projects pop up over the winter months, and it's too cold to spend time out there other than to fix things. You know, leave the tools and clean it up later, but later never comes around and then you end up with tools and crap all over the place. We had Halloween crap and bags of quarantine cans piling up, you know, random stuff everywhere. It just doesn't have a home and it just starts accumulating dust everywhere, you know. And I had this big heavy duty cabinet that they were thrown out at work and I ratchet strapped that thing to the roof, to the roof of my Ford Focus brought it home and I knew it would sit there for months until the warmer weather you know and it was kind of in the way and it was actually locked without a key too so well I drilled the lock out on the cabinet now it's a perfect tool chest for in the garage for things that I didn't quite have room for so something that your husband says he's got to fix up and use you know sometimes he needs it it doesn't always work out but sometimes it does you know anyways the garage is cleaned up it looks great and that did open up a can of worms for me part of me that I'm super passionate about that's just been sitting there staring me in the face and I just hardly ever talk about it. So let me introduce you to my car. It's a 2001 Audi S4. It's a twin turbo six speed stick. It's an all wheel drive blast to drive. You know this thing's actually becoming a pretty rare car. The B5 S4 platform is an intricate engineering marvel when you get your hands in there and work on it. And as a person who's always worked on vehicles with my dad my entire life, I knew I could buy one of these and work on it myself to maintain it and modify it to be a driver's dream. And it is. It is super fun to drive. So, the full story of the car actually started back in Pennsylvania when I, I'm originally from. And I'd been thinking about getting an Audi, something cheap but fun to drive that I could use in the summer months. You know, I was looking online and I kind of come to the conclusion that I probably could afford like an older A4, you know, with just a small engine with a little turbo and that I could put around it and have fun, but I saw this one in New Jersey and it wasn't too horribly priced, but that was for a reason. It had a salvage title. And that's something that can be scary for a lot of buyers because it does mean that the vehicle has been in an accident and it was damaged enough that the insurance company actually totaled the vehicle rather than having to pay it you know, to have it fixed in factory specs, you know, it's risky and you should be familiar with the vehicle in particular and you need to be either willing to fix what's wrong with it yourself or be prepared to pay someone else to fix it for you. So this place that the car was at, it's what I can only describe as it was just a chop shop. You know, the dude showing the car was shady, the lot was shady, the cars all felt shady. I mean, it was a salvage car in a car, you know, they were slinging cars out of this chop shop in Jersey. It is what it is. You know, the, the car had some front end damage, all right? That's, that's what they totaled it for. The entire radiator and the support holding it in, the headlights, the AC condenser, everything, the bumper, it was all replaced, the hood from a, re from a regular A4. So, and I had a couple electrical problems, but it was a running and driving car. And the second I felt the boost when we test drove it, I knew I had to have it. I mean, this thing, you know, the thing you need to know about B5 S4s is that when they're tuned, which this one was, they are fast. 
and in turn the front end gets smacked up on them you know people rack them and a new factory bumper alone is like two grand plus the radiator headlights and all the fixings i mean plus to have the you know the labor to have a dealer put it on yeah the insurance company just looks at the car it's almost 20 years old and they say no way we're junking it so i knew what i had here you know the car was not structurally damaged in any way the body was pretty clean actually and we're planning on modifying the car and keeping it so i was not afraid to buy a salvage titled vehicle from a shady shady chop shop in jersey when you know i knew i could fix it so i brought my dad with me you know we drove three hours to look at the car and although he had zero experience with european cars i wanted it bad enough and he thought it was in good enough shape which it really was and we brought it home now over time this car has had a lot of work put into it. We completely resealed the engine. We did the timing belt, which is a huge piece of mine that could cost thousands to have a chop shop do it, or a shop do it, not a chop shop. Uh, so the only way I could afford to do this was to do all the work in Dad's garage. And over time, we just slowly started buying pieces to get the car looking and functioning how I wanted it. Always building with a budget in mind and saving, you know, by doing everything ourselves. So. I'm pretty happy with the car she sits, and I would only really want to do anything else major if like the turbos go out on it, which, you know, would open up possibilities of going with larger turbos, which make these cars really wild. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it, though. You know, the point is, I put a lot of effort into this car, and it's a passion of mine. I was obsessed, and I still am, to be honest. It's a great car to drive around, and I'm proud of the work I've done to make it what it is today. And, and although it's never totally done, you know, but it shouldn't be sitting in the garage with an inch of dust on it, you know, where the kind of, there's kind of a reason it sat for that long, though. See, there, not long after we had finished rebuilding the car, I'd been driving it as my daily driver, and it was down on power, you know, something popped, coughed, but one day I was driving, and it was never the same since. It went into limp mode, and it's unable to boost as and drive as it should, which means it's drinking fuel really bad, and these cars will do that in order to not lean out and destroy itself when it knows something's wrong. So, winter was coming in Pennsylvania, I didn't want to be driving it anyways, so I looked for a cheap car that I didn't really care if it rotted away in the winter, and that led me, led me to the Ford Focus, and it's cheap to drive, cheap to fix, actually been quite reliable for some time, gets great gas mileage, you know, although it's rusting away, unfortunately, you know, but that's its, pur its purpose, it's, you know, salt's on the road, I'm not taking the Audi out, out. I'm going to be driving the Focus, so. Anyways, I met my wife and moved out here to Michigan, and the Audi never got back on the road. It just sat in PA for a while, and the plan was to bring it out after we were settled out here. And once I finally got it out here, which was like a 500-mile trip, you know, and it started off with a loose coolant hose and, you know, continued the rest of the way with a panic of, oh my God, don't break down, and holy shit, it's drinking fuel, you know, but we made it, and it was here. And once again, winter was coming by that time, so away it went into the garage, and it just awaited the day that she awakened from her slumber to be fixed and returned to her former glory, and that was spring cleanup, Easter weekend. So, I know it needs the mechanical side figured out, and I have my ideas of what's wrong with it and how to fix it, and I'll, I'll let you know on what I find out exactly what's wrong with it. It's definitely a wastegate related issue on one of the turbos, so it could be cheap or it could be expensive, but I'll be finding out soon uh, when I can get it on the lift at work and get a closer look at it. But for now, you know, it just, it just, I just took the time to clean it up a bit, motivate myself to get it on the road, and now it's looking much better, and I'm starting to remember why I fell in love with this car in the first place. You know, it's just the perfect car to drive in the nice weather if you're a person who loves to drive manual cars. Um, it's just what I've always wanted, and I have one. Modified by myself and my dad on a budget, and I, I'm just happy to have it and be able to enjoy it. So it's legal now. Um, I have a new plate coming for it soon, and I'm ready to do whatever it takes to get this thing fixed right and, you know, enjoy it the way I used to. So I want to say a shout out to my buddy Jay. He's my ASC certified mechanic friend, and uh, we're going to be looking at this car together and trying to get it back to its former glory. I think it's going to be fun to work on it with him and go over it and get an eager, even closer relationship with the car because it is a passion of mine. So it's not just a car to me. You know, Ford Focus is just a car. I'm a car enthusiast. This is something I take pride in. This car is not perfect, but it's nicer than anything I thought I'd ever have. So 
it's something I can drive knowing that I earned the right to have it because I put in the work myself and I know I'll be working on it for years, but it's because I want to, you know, or because it broke again. But either way, I plan to drive it whenever the weather is nice for the foreseeable future. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Anyways, I'll let you know anything planned for the car in the future because that's part of me and it's part of what's going on in my world. So I'm putting that out on the internet and just all this stuff out on the internet for you weirdos who have nothing better to do. Like when you run out of internet to watch, then you can tune in here. So that's the thing, you know, this car is just one thing that I'm trying to throw into my juggling act. I have other passions, you know, like where's the music been? I know it's, it's hard to balance everything for sure. I've been picking up the guitar every couple days and playing just, you know, haven't been able to devote enough brain power towards, you know, having anything organic come out. And I feel like it'll just be forced and that's not what I want to do and how I want to make my music. So when it comes out, it comes out. But and I'll be recording music soon enough. You know, it's just one of those things that I need to learn how to balance more efficiently. But I'm not going to let it go. It's just going to get set off to the side while I'm working on a couple other things. But we have a lot of other things going on, but we're going to definitely get back to it. So shifting gears here, you know, here's another thing. It's that time of year to start getting the lawn taken care of. And last weekend or two weekends ago, the damn tractor won't start. You know, I had a hell of a time tracing down the electrical connection. And it was giving me a short and the wiring for the motor swap I did on it last year. And that's just another thing that took most of my weekend to figure out. You know, it's it's one of those things that music gets bumped down on the priority list when you have to take time to get the grass mowed and the weed whacker going to keep the forest back and spray the weed killer on, you know, spray the weed killer on where you don't want the grass and get the fire pit cleaned up so, and, and get some firewood ready. Just, you know, spring cleaning. Get everything ready to enjoy the whole summer because it's getting warmer and I mean, goddamn, we're going to be opening the pool soon. You know, soon enough. And that's a whole thing. You know, it's got to got to get the chemicals going. You got to put the filter back together, check to see if it needs sand, you know, going to be changing it this year. It's a whole deal and it needs balanced in with everything else. So we're also looking to replace the central air conditioning unit at the house, probably the furnace as well, just to put a new motor. You know, I just did put a new motor in the, uh, in the blower of the, our current furnace, but we want to upgrade so we don't have to worry about anything with the heating and cooling aspect of the house at all anymore. And it's just all new and replaced and reliable. And that's what adulting is because you know what? I'm more excited about replacing that stuff than any toy I could buy myself. And that's that's why you save your money and spend responsibility. Spend, spend responsibly so you can take care of these things when you need to or preferably take care of them before you need to, just in case. And that's exciting, you know, when you're an adult. It's weird how your priorities change. So... We also just got a new power washer at the end of last season, and for this year, now we can keep the green funk off the back side of the house where the sun doesn't hit, so that's been a problem every year. So we also took the time to clean up our decks that we built, and we're going to get a good fresh seal on them this year. So you see, when you set a, every year, we set one goal, and we do one big upgrade each spring. Just over time, upgrade the, pop, the property, you know, for the future. Basically... Year one of ownership, we put in the sliding glass door to the backyard and built the deck out there. And it made the backyard usable, so it was necessary for the flow of the house. It was just our first move. The next year, we put in the pool ourselves. You know, we built the deck to it ourselves. We did everything ourselves with the help of our you know friends and family, and well, just family. And now we have this little slice of heaven in our backyard. You know, it's a perfect escape from all the crazy in the world. Then last year we rebuilt the shed. You know, it had good bones, but it was never finished properly. So we made the investment to rebuild it with steel siding once again ourselves. You know, you starting to see a theme here? <laughs> as long as you aren't afraid to learn, you can do anything yourself. And there's no reason you can't have nice things as long as you're willing to put in the effort to do it yourself. Now I don't care that I don't I don't have the nicest things because the things that I do have they were put together with my own two hands and the hands of my wife as well course who's always encouraging us to do these projects she really is the brains behind our lives and how we live it and I could never have this reality without without her you know next to me creating it so I got lucky 
So she lets me have my hobbies and be obsessed as I want to be about things and you know that make me happy. But she also keeps me on the rails and focused on what's important. So anyway, so with all the while that these things are taking my interest, you know, I'm trying to balance spending enough time with family at the same time. And it also, I, I'm still working full time. You know, I'm doing some heavy stuff at work lately too. You know, it's just another thing to balance in. I currently have a fire truck completely torn in half. I'm replacing the main pump. It's a huge job. I have zero experience with this other than, you know, the related work that I had done in the oil field in my 20s, which helped. But I'm pretty handy and I'm not afraid to figure it out. So I'm doing it. You know, I got it out. We spent a, a couple days rebuilding the pump and the transfer case and there were some hiccups along the way and, and you know some difficulties and involved in doing it but it's slowly coming together and yeah I'm just I'm just trying to stay positive and do my best my boss seems to not ask for more than that so I'm figuring it out as I go and well that's just the whole meaning of life isn't it just figure it out as you go so I'm learning to balance everything and work to obtain my goals one thing at a time so if I put my hopes and intentions out there by documenting it here, I feel like I'll be more inclined to hold myself accountable and not let myself to get complacent. You know, I have, I, I, I have like pretty much, I want to have all the things that I work for, you know, and I want to enjoy them as I've earned the right to do so. And I just keep working towards achieving the things I want in life one at a time so I can, I can have everything in my cake and eat it too. So. All right, I can only hope that if I share these update, updates once in a while, you know, and throw out some positive vibes into the universe, at least attempt to connect with other people out there who are probably just trying to do the same thing, you know, struggling, struggling to get through the day while doing the best we can, just like everyone else, you know, just doing the best we can together. And that's, and that's you know, we try and promote having a strong community that lift each other up. And that's what we want to do. It's, it's important that we look out for each other because it seems like many establishments nowadays only profit off of keeping us divided and ultimately prevents us from reaching our potential as like what should be the strongest community that we all share together, we the people, Americans. Anyways, so if you made it this far and, you know, I just wanted you to take one thing away from the video. It's just... Know that you can do anything you set your mind to. As long as you find the balance, you know, between your responsibilities and your hobbies, friends and family, community, and keeping an overall positive outlook. You know, just remember, we're all just flying through space and time on a big rock floating around a magic ball of fire. And if that's possible, anything is, right? So go out there and make it happen because you can totally do it. And, you know, just take, thanks for taking the time. I, I know it's, I haven't been checking in as much as I should. And that's just one more thing that I need to work on balancing out with everything else I have going on. But I'm committed to doing it. You know, I'm not going to stop no matter how long it takes. I'm going to keep going because that's what it's all about, you know. So... We're just going to keep going, you know. I think for now, uh, I'm just going to jam on this track. So uh, thanks for coming around. And...